Okay, so here is the lecture for today, uh, Thursday, March the 5th. Um, you're going to need to pull up the notes for today, which look like this. 7.6, um, 7.7, exponential functions and exponential growth and decay. 7.6 deals with exponential functions. 7.7 .7 deals with exponential growth and decay. So two separate topics, very, very, very closely related. Um, again, see if you can follow along. I encourage you to pause, rewind, anything you can with this video to ensure that you understand this because, you know, upon returning to school tomorrow, we'll review, uh, go over this in depth. You know, we still plan on testing um, next week. So to start, we're going to introduce what an exponential function is. Uh, we've got the book definition. An exponential function is a function in the form y equals a times b to the x, where a can't be 0, b has to be greater than 0, b cannot be 1, and x is a real number. These are the shapes that exponential functions could take, and you can see what makes them such. So a number to the x, y equals 2 to the x, 4 to the x, 8 to the x, whatever, is going to give you this red upward curve here. Um, taking that whole number that and making it negative uh, will make it a downward curve, downward from left to right. Um, over here you can see if this value is a fraction, so 1 half to the x or 0.5 to the x, any kind of decimal fraction that is less than one, um, you're going to get this downward curve from left to right. And then just like with the other one, if you make it negative, you flip that curve, and so it would be going upwards. So that's just kind of the general shapes of the graphs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, <clears throat> in general, when you're dealing with the exponential function, um, these letters, y, a, b, and x, are going to mean something. You know, y is still going to be your output, x is still going to be your input. And so what it ends up really becoming like, it ends up becoming like um, y equals the total, um, a equals the initial value, um, b equals your factor, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. And x is the duration, uh, usually the time. time. And um, let's see. Try not to get too crazy here. So <clears throat> keep this in mind as we go over all of this information. Y is going to give be kind of your total amount or your output. A is your initial value or your starting value. B is your factor, and um, the little x where the exponent is, is the duration or the time. And so that'll give us this form, this um, y equals a times b to the x. Now, <clears throat> if you see some of them might have like a, an additional value, let's say like a plus zero or plus one or plus whatever. Um, I'm going to talk about this value here in a little bit. Um, but for now, we're going to focus on just the y equals a times b to the x. And again, this is a multiplication symbol here a times b to the x, where y is your total or your output, a is your initial value, b is your factor, and x is the duration or the time. So, before we get too far into it, let's discuss the difference between um, exponential functions and linear functions. So I have here an example of an exponential function, y equals a times b to the x, and a linear function, y equals mx plus b. And the big thing is, you know, how the graphs will look. Like I said, if we look up here, we can tell that because this is a number and it's positive, 
Um, let's mute this real quick. Oops, didn't do anything. Okay, because this is a positive number, we can guess that our graph is probably going to look like this to some effect. And because this is linear, y equals 2 to the x, we know that this graph will look like this. Um, and, and I'm going to pull up uh, my calculator just to kind of show you guys the difference between these two functions, um, linear and um, exponential. And I want to show you the difference in their tables. So y equals... 3 times 6 to the x, and then my second line, which will end up being red. Um, actually, let's see if I can link it up with the lines I drew here. So my red line, I want to be 3 times 6 to the x, and my black line, I want to be y equals 2x. So if I graph those, You can see the two lines. Um, I'm going to zoom um, standard here, what like a standard graph would look like. So there's my exponential graph. It's got that upward curve. And here is my linear function. So you can see the difference in the shape between an exponential function and a linear function. Now let's take a look at the difference in the tables, which you can kind of see over here. Um, you know, let's go to the table here. So here you can see when x is negative 1, y is 0.5. In the exponential, y is negative 2 in the linear. So the black numbers represent the linear outputs. The red numbers represent the exponential. What I want to show you is the, the difference, the common difference between the outputs, because we know our inputs all go up by 1. Negative 3 to negative 2 is 1. Negative 2 to negative 1 is 1. We're adding 1 in all of our inputs. <clears throat> On the exponential, what you should notice is that we are going to multiply by 6 each time. 0. 0.5 times 6 is 3. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 times 6 is 108. 108 times 6 is 648. All the way up, we're multiplying by 6. Whereas in our linear function, we are going up by 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. Plus two. And if you remember, that's what makes something a linear function. It goes up by a common difference or down by a common difference, in this case, plus 2. Now, this red table, I said, goes up by 6. Well, this value here tells us that. That's why b is called the factor. That'll tell what my output goes up by. Multiply by 6 each time. Um, and so that is going to be kind of your starting point. And we're going to end up having to look at um, a couple tables in a little bit and write an exponential function. But um, before we do that, I kind of want to scroll down a little bit and graph these exponential functions. Oops here. So let's take a look at these two graphs. y equals 0. 0.5 times 3 to the x. y equals let's see if I get 2 times 0. 0.5 to the x. And these are going to be very, very different. Um, I'm just going to, in this table, negative 2, negative 1, 0, oops, 0, 1, Two. And we'll do the same here, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And you're going to plug these values in for the x here. And so if you do 3 to the negative 2, we'll pull up the calculator again. We'll just bring it over to the side here. If we go 3 to the negative 2 is 0 0.11111. If we times that by 0 0.5, we get 0.555556. That as a fraction is 1 over 18. If I 
make it smaller. Maybe you can see it. That is a fraction is 1 over 18. If we do the same thing, 0.5 times 3 to the negative 1, we get 0.166667, repeating that as a fraction is 1 sixth. And if we go on, anything to the zero power is what? Hopefully you guys remember by your rules is 1. So 0.5 times 3 to the zero power in theory should be 0.5. And that's what we get, 0.5 or 1 half. We'll just make this one 0.5. And then we continue 0 0.5 times 3 to the first power is going to give us 1.5. This is getting all kinds of messed up here. One point five. And then when we do point five times three to the second power, we get 4.5. And what you should notice in all of these is that we keep multiplying by 3. 1 over 18 times 3 gives me 1 over 6. 1 over 6 times 3 gives me 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 3 gives me 1.5. 1 1.5 1 .5 times 3 gives me 4.5. And we know that it's going up by 3 because of this number here is 3. We're going to multiply by 3 each time. And so you can tell down here, what would you guess we would be multiplying by each time? Well, if you guessed 0.5, you're correct. And so I'm going to show you what you can do in your calculator to kind of save time. To fill out this table, I'm just going to go to y equals. Make sure everything in there is clear. Um, and in my first bar, I'm just going to write 2 times 0.5 to the x and then hit second table and here are all my table values and so I can do less work so I can see that it's um, 8421.5 and you can see 8 times 0.5 is 4, 4 times 0.5 is 2, 2 times 0.5 is 1, 1 times 0.5 is 0.5. And so, you know, then you just transfer these ordered pairs to the graph. We've got the point negative 2, 1 18th, negative 1, 1 6th, 0, 1 half, 1, 1 and a half, 2, 4 and a half. And so our graph will look something similar to this. I guess I should have done that in red, but that's okay. Down here, negative 2, 8, negative 1, 4, 0, 2, 1, 1, 2.5. What you can tell our graph will look something like that. And so that is how you plug in the values to fill out your table and graph. You are going to be expected to graph exponential functions by filling out a table on uh, the test. Again, that's something I think you should be able to do. No big deal. Um, so if you don't quite understand that, rewind it, rewatch how I did it, kind of rewatch how I worked the calculator. Um, but for now, I'm going to clear the ink and we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step which is um, how to evaluate an exponential equation or an exponential function. So if you look at these two problems here, we've got, and I'm actually going to do a third, uh, third type of problem that's kind of different than this one that I just want you to see. Um, and so we'll talk about that in a minute. But an initial population of 20 rabbits triples every half of a year. The function y equals 20 times 3 to the x gives the population after x number of half-year periods. How many rabbits will there be after three years? Well, this is perfect. 
because if you look, we have all the information we need here. So let me kind of rewrite up here y equals a times b to the x. That was our exponential function. And if you remember, y equals the total, a equals the initial value or what we start with, b equals our factor, and x equals our duration or our number of times. So this becomes quite simple to fill up. y equals our initial value, which in this case was 20, times our b value, which is triples, so 3, to the x. Now, they were nice enough and gave us the function y equals 20 times 3 to the x. All we have to do is plug in a number for the x and evaluate. So here's the tricky part, though. A lot of you may have been tempted to plug in 3 for x because 3 years. But if you look, x represents half of a year, half year periods. So you've got to think, how many half year periods will occur in three years? Well, two half years occur for every one year. So in three years, there will be six half year periods. So you're going to want to plug six in for x. y equals 20 times 3 to the 6th power. And that'll tell you how many rabbits there would be after three years. So you can just go over to your calculator. And again, make sure you um, kind of keep, I would keep parentheses, so 20 times 3 to the 6th power. One, 14,580. So there will be 14,580 rabbits. That is how you evaluate um, given an expression. So I want you guys to try this one and see if you can figure it out. So suppose a culture of bacteria doubles every hour. There are initially 2,200 bacteria. The function 2,200 times 2 to the x gives the number of bacteria after x hours. How many bacteria will there be after 5 hours? I honestly want you to pause the video and see if you can evaluate this on your own. Um, you know, give yourself a couple minutes, see if you can do it, and then just check your answer. So go ahead and pause now and give it a try. For those of you who are unsure and want to follow along, or if you've now figured it out and you want to check your answer, let's see. Y equals our initial value, let's unbold that, which was 2200 times our factor, which was doubles every hour. How many bacteria will there be after five hours? So we're just going to plug five in for x. And that allows us to come over to our calculator, 2200 times 2 to the 5th. 70,400 bacteria. So hopefully this seems pretty easy. It is uh, one of the more simple kind of problems. There are going to be a couple of these on your test where you're given the function. You can notice you're given the formula in both of these. You've just got to figure out what to plug in for x. The only tricky part is in wording like this. X amount of half year periods. Well, there are six half year periods in three years. You got to kind of keep that straight, or uh, you could kind of mess yourself up there. Okay, so again, this would be a good time to take a small break if you need to before we move on. So far, we've learned the difference between linear and exponential, kind of what the exponential function means and looks like, how to graph it and fill out a table, and how to evaluate it. Now we're going to go over how to write uh, an exponential function given a table. And so what we're going to do is we're going to base it off of this table right here. This x is 0, 1, 2, and 3, y is negative 1, negative 3, negative 9, negative 27. 
And so how do I write an exponential function? How do I write a y equals a times b to the x based off this table? Well, if you remember, a is the initial value, but we can't determine that from this table. So you're actually going to start with the b value, which, if you recall, is what you're multiplying by each time. So if you look in our table, we multiply by 3 each time. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 times 3 is negative 27. So we know in our equation that the b value has to be 3. So let's start from there. We know it has to be y equals a times 3 to the x. So your next step when you're given a table is to um, try to figure out what this a value might mean. So what I want you to do is pick one of the values in your table. Let's do um, 1 per se. So if I plug 1 in for x here, what is 3 to the first power? So if I plug 1 in for x here, 3 to the first power, it should equal 3. Well, how do I get from 3 to negative 3? What's something that I can multiply by 3 to get negative 3? There's only one answer. If, you, if you're an equation person and you want to set this up, think of it like this. You could set up the equation y equals a times 3 because 3 to the 1 is 3. And then we know that that y value has to equal negative 3. So just solve for a. Well, if you divide each side by 3, you see that a has to be negative 1. So we know that the final formula, the final equation for this table is going to be y equals negative 1 times 3 to the x. You'll more commonly probably see that as y equals negative 3 to the x. So we're going to do another example. Um, so what I need you to do now is open up the notes page I gave you. It's titled Notes. Um, the link is Notes. I gave some extra space for notes here, as well as some problems that we're going to do a bit later. But in this extra notes, we are going to look at the table. Let's get rid of that underline here. One, two, three, four, five. Let's undo this auto numbering here. So when the x value is 1, we want it to be 10, 20, 40, 80, 160. So let me kind of space these out a little bit. And again, these are the x values. And these are the y values. So I want you to pause it really quick, pause the video really quickly, and see if you can write the y equals okay, get rid of that underline, y equals a times b to the x. See if you can write this equation based on that table. When x is 1, y is 10, and so forth. If you are still severely lost and you uh, need to follow along, that's fine. Or if you've paused and you're ready to check, let's see how we did. We know that the common factor between these is multiplying by 2. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. 40 times 2 is 80. 80 times 2 is 160. So that tells me that the B value has to be 2. So now we're going to pick one of our values. Let's do this one because that's really easy. So we're going to plug 1 in for x and see what that should be. So right now 
I know my B value has to be 2, so we've got Y equals A times 2 to the X. So I'm going to plug 1 in for there, and when that happens, my answer should be 10. So I'm going to set up 10 equals A times 2 to the first power, because when X is 1, y should be 10. And then we're just going to solve. 2 to the first power is 2. If we divide by 2, we see that a has to be 5. So our equation, our exponential equation, is going to be y equals y equals 5 times 2 to the x. And that's it. So hopefully uh, you've seen how to do that. If you're still stuck, please send me an email so you can try to figure out how to do that as you are going to be expected to write um, equations given a table. Um, so now we're going to move on to the next thing, which is how to write an equation um, given a word problem. And so this is the other part of the notes down here that you see um, it says the turtle problem and this animal problem so I'm gonna make this bigger so you guys can see it again I encourage you guys to follow along but we've got this problem here it says the turtle problem it says an initial population of 750 endangered turtles triples each year what will the population of turtles be after five years? So this is kind of like the word problems we did earlier, only this time you're not given the function. You've got to make it. So recall that y equals uh, a times b to the x. And recall that y is the total. So that's the answer that we're trying to find. a is the initial value. b is the factor that it's increasing by and x is the amount of time. So this is really easy, really straightforward. You are just going to write y equals initial value 750 times my factor. Well, How much is it mul multiplying by each year? It's tripling. And so that means it's going to increase by a factor of 3 each year. And then we would put to the x. So this is the equation that represents how many turtles will be on this island or wherever this is after any given amount of years. The second half of the story problem wants us to find out what that would be after 5 years. So you're just going to take 5 and plug it in for x. So when you do that, I'm going to use a calculator. Seven hundred and fifty times three to the fifth power. That gives us one hundred and eighty two thousand two hundred and fifty turtles. 182,250 turtles. 182,250. 182,250. And we were able to figure that out just by rating, my, making this equation. Now you could do 750 times 3, take that answer times it by 3 again, take that new answer, times it by 3 again. You could do that five times, and you would land on 182,250. But, you know, sometimes these numbers may be really big, or the number of years may be really big, and so you might not necessarily want to do that. So I want you to try this second one that deals with the, suppose 10 animals are taken to an island, and then their population triples every year. How many animals will there be in four years? I want you to try this one on your own. So go ahead and pause and give it a try. 
If you are still lost and you're just wanting to follow along with me, that's fine. If you have uh, tried it and you're ready to check your answer, let's see what you did here. We know that we're trying to get y equals a times b to the x. Remembering that a is my initial value, b is my factor that is changing each year, and x is the amount of time. So, suppose 10 animals are taken to an island. So we're starting with 10. y equals 10. That's what we're starting with. Then their population triples every year. So we're changing by a factor of 3. Their population triples every year year. X represents number of years. How many animals will there be in four years? Plug four into X and do this on your calculator if you would like to. Three to the fourth power is 81. 81 times 10 is 810. So this island will have 810 animals in four years. You can go on to figure out how many animals there will be in five years, six years, seven years, however many years you need to. So that is basically the first half of the lecture. Um, this is on exponential functions, how to write them, how to uh, evaluate them, how to graph them, um, based on different word problems, given examples, given information. Now, this is lecture one from today. This will be the um, exponential function portion of the notes, exponential functions. There will be a link to a second video called Exponential Growth and Decay, which I expect you to do as well. Um, exponential Growth and Decay is very similar. It's just a, got a little hitch to it but I wanted to be sure to force you to take a small break and go do something else uh, and then come back and do the exponential growth and decay. Your homework tonight will be over everything, so I expect you to watch that other video as well. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.